Okay. Hello. Good, good morning. Good evening, everybody. Uh, boa tarde a todos. Buenas tardes. We are here in the uh, third week of the uh, Seminario Simondon Indisciplinar. Indisciplinar. Um, esperen. Voy a... My name is Gonzalo Aguirre. Um, I'm glad to moderate here this this table. Uh, trans individual electronics and the digital. We have we are here with uh, with Pedro Ferreira from Brazil with Yuho Rantala from Finland and with Andrea Bardin from, you are in Oxford now, Andrea? Yeah, okay. Rufo, he's Italian. Just arrived. Just arrived, okay. I, I was in Italy yesterday. Much oh. better. <laughs> I think so. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I don't want to to speak. I, I, have, I have my time and the first day. Now I want to introduce Pedro Ferreira, professor of sociology at Unicampi and coordinator of the Laboratory for the Sociology of Association Processes. His research activity is situated in the field of science and technology studies with focus on electronic life and the social agency of chemical elements with recent publications of book chapters and journal articles on these and other topics. He has been translating, this is very important, text by Gilbert Simondon to Portuguese since uh, 2007. This is important. Now in Portuguese, uh, they have the... It's published, for example, the individuation. Individual sound, no? that is correct. Uh, so, Pedro, uh, I, 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 let, I give you the word, please. Okay. He will present, I, I will say your title, no? uh, Exploring the Social Agency of Silicon in Microelectronics. It's okay. Okay, Gonzalo, thank you very much for your introduction. It's a great pleasure to be here this afternoon with you guys, Andrea Bardin. Great reference for me, for my work, you, Horantala, and you, Gonzalo, and also the other people here. Uh, uh, this is very, it's very nice to be taking part of this seminar, and I thank very much the organizers for having invited me. Uh, I will share my screen so we can start the presentation. So I hope you guys are seeing the presentation. Uh, uh, so my name is Pedro Ferreira. I'm professor of sociology at Unicamp and coordinator of the Laboratory for the Sociology of Association Processes, Laboratório de Sociologia dos Processos de Associação. I'm also involved in the Simondon study group at Unicamp, Grupo de Estudos Gilbert Simondon. Today, I will try to explore some aspects of what could be called the social agency of silicon in microelectronics. This research is funded by Conselho Nacional de Desenvolvimento Científico e Tecnológico, CNPq, which is National Council of Scientific and Technological Development. In, the, in their program, Programa Institucional de Bolsas de Iniciação Científica Ensino Médio. I would like to start with a grateful reference to my dear teacher, Laimerge Garcia dos Santos, without whose generous guidance and joyful company, I would not be speaking here today, and certainly not about Simon Dom. Laimer is now retired professor of Unicamp Sociology Department, and was probably the first Brazilian sociologist to use Simon Dom's idea systematically 
Since the 1980s, Laimed has been mobilizing Simondon's idea to articulate consistently synergies among Yanomami shamanism and contemporary technology, art, and society. In Laimert's, Laimert's many writings, Simondon shines in passages about the shamanic and magic origins of technology, as well as about the many cultural, political, social, and economic implications of the reticular resonances of magic, aesthetics, and technology. Laimer also explored the effects of these ideas beyond academic texts in, in collective artistic projects such as the opera Amazonia Teatro Music in Tres Parts, Amazonas Music Theater in Three Parts, and premiered in Munich, Germany in 2010, and the movie Shapiri, a Yonomami word that can loosely be betrayed as spirit, released in 2012. His own Simondonian accounts about these artistic projects are available in English in his bilingual publication of 2013 by Enemio Nuzum Edições, an editor in Sao Paulo, titled Amazonia Transcultural, Transcultural Amazonas. So today, as I try to start to speak to you about the social, social agency of silicon in microelectronics, I'm taken back to one of Laimert's undergraduate sociology classes at Unicamp in 1999. Before a class of students who had not read the text previously assigned for the lecture, the disappointed but resolute teacher decided to read out loud the 10 pages of his text, Bill Viola Shaman Eletronico, Bill Viola Electronic Shaman. The class had just been completely disconcerted by Viola's 89 minutes long 1986 video titled, I do not know what it is I am like. And Langmert's words sounded like a mantra. Everybody knows the shaman works with energy. The same happens with the electronic shaman. Viola himself explains, when Australian Aborigines dance to celebrate the creation of the world, they describe the creation of the universe and evoke the energy of this creation. It is this same energy that, according to Laimer, inspires Viola when he sits before his editing equipment, like a shaman working as a kind of antenna capturing the frequency through which the images present themselves as they are, energy taking form. I have to say, my life was ne has never been the same since that class. At that time, Laimert's reading of Bill Viola's video art as electronic shamanism prepared my attention and my perception for when, a few months later, I heard for the first time about electronic dance music DJs being shamans. So, between 2001 and 2006, I engaged in a socio-anthropological research under Laimert's supervision about this supposed shamanism of some electronic dance music DJs that resulted in my doctoral thesis, Musica Eletronica e Shamanismo, Técnicas Contemporâneas do Éxtase, Electronic Music and Shamanism, Contemporary Techniques of Ecstasy. Today, I want to resume one crucial Simondonian thread, precisely the one Laimert presents as a kind of antenna, the electronic shaman's ritual operations of energy taking form. And that I later found out could be related to the same operating principle of the silicon radio crystal detector and of the silicon solar photovoltaic cell. Much like the domestication of a lightning bolt, the photovoltaic effect on solar cells, as well as the field effect transistor and the crystal detector, all rely on the same fundamental characteristic of silicon crystals. They tend to form PN junctions, interfaces between two regions of the crystal distinguished by slight differences in free electron availability. Junctions where, under cer certain conditions of the near electromagnetic field, temperature and pressure, electrons tend to flow or not from one point of the crystal to the other, energy taking form. Many people are talking about electronic life nowadays. Since the 1990s, the expression has been frequently employed in social theory and the general media alike to refer to many diverse aspects of social life that 
of, of, of a social life that is increasingly technically mediated by electronic machines and systems. Transformations in the family, in illness and death, in education, in science, culture, the law, religion, art, the environment, politics, and the economy have all been linked to this new kind of life. A life that is at the same time human and non-human, social and technological. Although widely used, the expression electronic life is seldom defined or problematized. Instead, it is usually considered self-evident. This causes the expression to be used in many different and even contradictory ways. Let me give you two examples. Polish sociologist Sigmund Bauman in his 2009 book, Consuming Life, said that in South Korea, where most social life is already routinely electronically mediated and most social life is conducted primarily in the company of a computer, iPod or mobile, and only secondarily with other fleshy beings, social life has already turned into an electronic life or cyber life. And living social life electronically is no longer a choice, but a take it or leave it necessity. The Cameroonian philosopher Achille Mbembe, on the other hand, in his 2019 book, Necropolitics, says that a new and unprecedented phase in the history of humanity has effectively effectively begun, in which it will become increasingly difficult, if not impossible, to distinguish human organisms from electronic flows, the life of humans from that of processors. In this new phase, made possible by accumulated know-how concerning the storage of enormous data flows by the extreme power and speed of their processing, and by advances in algorithmic computation, Mbembe sees an exponential acceleration of technological development and industrial innovation, the unremitting digitalization of facts and things, and the relative generalizing of what might be called electronic life and its double or robotically adjusted life. The terminal point in this digital cognitive turn, according to Mbembe, could well be a widespread infiltration of microchips into biological tissues, a humano-machinic coupling that is already underway and that has not only led to the genesis of new mythologies of the technical object, but also had the immediate consequences of calling into question the very status of the modern subject stemming from the humanist tradition. However, although calling attention to the so-called electronic life, neither Bauman nor Mbembe take the time to define or problematize the expression itself, instead using it as a self-evident token of the issues they are addressing. But are they talking about the same thing when they talk about electronic life? A rare exception in this point can be found in the writings of the Italian sociologist Vincenzo Susca, who has been working since at least 2011 on what he has called a sociology of electronic life strongly influenced by the ideas of thinkers such as Marshall McLuhan, Michel Mathezoli, Gilbert Duhan, and Georges Bataille, as well as Emil Durkheim. In his writings, Suska has been able to work out some fundamental issues of the concept, such as the perceived instantaneity, instantaneity of electronic communication, capable of creating a shared present that may be distributed across the whole globe and thus potentially disrupting local temporalities. A principle of connection or connective effervescence that privileges the very act of connecting and communication above whatever it is that is actually connected or communicated, connective form over connected content, and the unfolding of a kind of third dimension in our social lives, a hybrid dimension unfolding from the growing synergy between our own life, our online and offline lives, between the material lives we live as flesh and blood biological beings and the immaterial lives we live as digital representations in computer networks. Sounding almost Durkheimian, Suska speaks about the elementary forms of electronic life as being produced and sustained by new electronic, uh, new electronically mediated rituals of communion and communication through which social groups experience new forms of aura and emotions and build new kinds of social solidarity around new symbols 
emblems, representations, and beliefs. Suska's work is no doubt an exception when it comes to forging a sociology of electronic life, for instead of using the expression as a self-evident mean of speaking about something else, he explores its multiple meanings and implications. But these explorations, wide and interesting as they are, don't go much beyond the consumption and use of electronic media and systems. Missing in Suska's writings are the actual workings and maintenance of electronic media and systems. And most strikingly, what is missing is the co-laborious process of their invention or concretization what Simon Don calls their technicity. I'll skip this one. Where are we now at this moment? I know I'm here in my office at my house in Campinas, Sao Paulo, Brazil, but I am not only here. If I were only here, I wouldn't be speaking at the computer this way. I wouldn't be acting, thinking, and feeling, like Turkheim used to say, the way I do now. My behavior is meaningful only if we consider that I am also in another place, a place where I am not just alone in my office, but also really with other people, actually, you guys. So what is this place where we are together now? Where are we now? Bruce Sterling opened his 1994 book, The Hacker Crackdown, with a reference to William Gibson's 1982 definition of cyberspace, the place where a telephone conversation appears to occur, the place between the phones, the in, in, indefinite place out there where the two of you, two human beings, actually meet and communicate. For Sterling, writing in the mid-1990s, cyberspace was a genuine place that was growing in size and wealth and political importance where things happen that have very genuine consequences. It is interesting to see how in the mid 1990s, Sterling could narrate the transition from the electrical cyberspace of the telephone to the electronics cyberspace of computers. In the past 20 years, this electrical space, which was once thin and dark and one dimensional, little more than a narrow speaking tube stretching from phone to phone, has flung itself open like a gigantic jack-in-the-box. Light has flooded upon it, the eerie light of the glowing computer screen. This dark electric netherworld has become a vast flowering electronic landscape. Since the 1960s, the world of the telephone has crossbred itself with computers and television. And though there is still no substance to cyberspace, nothing you can handle, it has a strange kind of physicality. Now, it makes good sense today to talk of cyberspace as a place all its own. Writing in the mid 1990s, Sterling still wrote about cyberspace and the internet as if it were some other place out there we may visit different from our supposedly real physical life, a place where we could enter and stay for some time, but then had to leave. Writing about electronic life in the 2010s, Suska offers a more contemporary vision of cyberspace as a kind of third dimension that emerges from the meshing of our online and offline lives, or in more Simondonian terms, from the eventual resolution on another level of the disparate incompatibilities of these lives. So where are we now? Where is this third dimension when it is no longer the mere electrical space between two telephones, but has evolved into this electronic network that increasingly feedbacks constantly and in real time with all aspects of our lives? Instead of the 1990s image of a place we eventually visit different from the real world, we have now this 21st century image of a place we eventually reach by the compatibilization of two disparate dimensions of our lives online and offline. So, in the rest of my talk today, I would like to explore that strange kind of physicality Sterling attributed to cyberspace. Not the physicality of a substance you could handle, but still of something you could feel and live. And I'll try to do this as if this strange kind of physicality referred to the control modulation of electrons by nanometric transistors built on indoped silicon crystals 
in the microelectronics that technically mediate contemporary electronic life. A transistor is a gatekeeper. It controls the flow of electrons in a circuit. It decides if electrons pass, flow, or not. It says yes or no, plus or minus, one or zero. The transistor is the solid state functional equivalent of the triode and thus presupposes the diode because it presupposes a unidirectional flow of electricity for it to control. Transistors built by doping, etching, and printing the surface of silicon crystals are now as small as two nanometers, and one microchip may be, may be composed of trillions of these, interconnected by aluminum and copper wires. Uh, wire, not wires, but trails. According to Simon Don, the transistor is like a brick mode form that changes constantly, thus giving various different forms to a continuous clay substance. The clay would be the electrons, and the mode would be the gate of the transistor. Control of the, of the gate is control of the flow. The flow of what? Electronic life. Silicon is usually known as chemical element 14, the second most abundant element in the Earth's crust, although only found bonded with oxygen and other metals in the form of minerals known as silica and silicates. It is also very frequently known as a chemical element isolated for the first time in 1824 by the famous Swedish chemist Berzelius, an element present in the in human life and technology since prehistory in the form of flints, rocks, clay, ceramics, and glass, and crucial to microelectronics since the mid 20th century in its ultra pure crystalline form. A little less frequently ac acknowledged is the fact that pure silicon crystals are not something you could find laying around, that they don't form spontaneously on earth that they were first produced in scale in the United States in the 1950s at Bell Labs and Texas Instruments using the Chikrowski process, and that they are actually very difficult and expensive to produce, demanding specialized machinery and various and sometimes toxic resources and emissions. But the least known aspect of silicon is probably the most important one in terms of its agency in microelectronics. What is it about these ultra-pure silicon crystals that make them not only the real, but also the ideal milieu for electronic life? In other words, what is it that they do that infrastructurally and materially sustain contemporary electronic life? It is not for lack of educational YouTube videos that the workings of transistors and the specificities of doped ultra-pure silicon crystals are not yet common sense knowledge, even though these are the materials and processes that increasingly mediate our contemporary life. It's just hard to understand intuitively things that happen at the atomic scale or close to the speed of light. For example, what does it mean to say that an atom is happy or sad, satisfied or searching for electrons. Chemists, physicists, and, and engineers talk about that all the time. It is called the octet rule. It means that any atom wants to have eight electrons on its valence shell, its outermost shell, the one by means of which it tends to relate to other atoms by sharing, acquiring, or giving away electrons. And it means that if it doesn't have that shell complete, it doesn't rest until it does. That explains the explosive, 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 re explosive reaction involving the alkaline metals and the halogens. In the case of the alkaline metals, they have only one electron in their outermost shell over a complete underlying layer of eight electrons and so badly need to get rid of that cursed extra electron. In the case of the halogens, they have seven electrons in their outermost shell, and so badly need to find only one more precious electron to complete it, so badly that they will blow things up and even kill to get what they need. But that rule 
only works neatly in these extreme cases. Most of the time, especially when dealing with transition metals, things won't blow up. They just rust and melt and crystallize. This means that these atoms don't care much about whether they gain or lose electrons. They just do what's more at hand in each occasion. And there's also the extreme case of this indifference, the metalloids. These guys are distributed in a weird diagonal line in the right side of the periodic table that starts with boron in column 13 and goes diagonally through silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, and tellurium. And some periodic tables also include the radioactive polonium and astatine. Crystals of these atoms are so indifferent to the octet rule that they only exchange electrons in certain very specific condi conditions of pressure and temperature. And these conditions may be very finely controlled. In the case of silicon microchips, the crystal is doped with boron and phosphorus atoms, which means that atoms of these elements are violently introduced into the silicon crystal matrix. Boron and phosphorus are chosen because they have three and five electrons in their valence shell, respectively. One less and one more than the four electrons of the silicon atoms. This creates regions in the crystal where there is slightly more or less free electrons to generate a current. The interface between these regions, called p-n junctions, once transformed into an electronic gate, allows the precise direction and control of the flow of electrons. So, one of the reasons silicon is so crucial for microelectronics is because it is a metalloid. Its ultra-pure crystals, once doped, carved, and printed in the form of transistors, afford the finest control possible over the flow of electrons, energy taking form. Other aspects of silicon could also be mentioned as intuitive windows into the singularities of its agency and their relations to contemporary electronic life. Its abundance in the Earth's crust and relative, relatively low mining cost, even considering the economic, human, and environmental cost of separating it from oxygen and other elements, is a great incentive for the microelectronic industry to build itself on top of it. The fact that the only moving parts in the silicon crystals in the silicon transistor are the electrons flowing to the gate and from the source to the drain is another crucial aspect of silicon for microelectronics. Moving parts are weak links in any circuit, susceptible to wear, aging, oxidation, rust, and pure and simple mechanical failure. They break. Vacuum tubes or valves, greatly analyzed by Simondon in his book on the mode of existence of technical objects, could be considered a transition from mechanical to electronic switches. But even they don't compare with solid state semiconductors such as silicon in reliance and working lifetime. And finally, ultra pure silicon crystals are to microelectronics the same that a vacuum is to physics. It is that ideal condition in which all the laws work without noise or need for correction. The possibility of building directly on the surface of the silicon crystals and with nanometric precision, different molecular structures with different electrical properties and behaviors has been a crucial component in the microelectronics revolution of the 1960s. Many other electronic components beyond the elementary transistor, like resistors, capacitors, diodes, and others, may be built by means of the controlled intro introduction of impurities in the surface of the silicon crystal. This molecular control over the surface of the silicon crystal, precisely introducing impurities in an ultra-pure molecular structure, is one of the main factors that made of these microchips this place where people around the world since the mid 20th century live an increasing amount of their lives. So uh, let me just to finish, I'll just stop sharing my screen. So um, to conclude, what can be said about the social agency of silicon 
what can be said about the social agency of silicon in microelectronics? Well, first of all, silicon crystals allow engineers and those paying these engineers to achieve an extreme level of control over the flow of electrons in a circuit. And if it is true that we are increasingly en enmeshed in electronic media, living a kind of electronic life, living inside microchips and computer networks, as we are now at this very moment, control over these electrons means control over our electronic lives. It is not surprising that it was precisely control that characterized for Gilles Deleuze the kind of society we were entering when, during the second half of the 20th century, humanity increasingly started to confront the forces of silicon. And it makes perfect sense that it was precisely the technological paradigm of the transistor or, the, or triode that served Simon Don as his overarching theoretical scheme for individuation or for the information of the individual. In its ultra pure crystalline form, silicon has emerged since the microelectronics revolution of the 1960s as a powerful means of control. Maybe the most powerful humanity has ever had to face the domestication of lightning, of energy taking form, energy from the creation of the universe. So, from a Latin American perspective, and in a Simondonian spirit, my final question today is, how are we to compose with these forces of silicon so as to resume meaningful collective individuations instead of burning away in the silicon cages of our master-slave, telemorphic and capitalist social network business schemes? <laughs> That's it. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, Pedro. We, will, we begin with Dorheim and we finish with Bevel. It's okay. We have we have we have a lot to to, to speak later. Um, now um, is the continuity continuity of our our table trans individual electronics and the digital the first table in English in this uh, seminario Simonon indisciplinar uh, it will be it will be a some table in Italian and in French I think. So um, now I present a Yuho Rantala. I have to here. Yuho Rantala is a PhD student at the doctoral program in philosophy in Faculty of Social Science, Tampa University in Finland. Rantala's ongoing doctoral research considers, considers the human algorithm networks in the light of Gilbert Simondon's philosophy. Yuho has also done research and writing in Finnish and English on blockchains, blockchain technologies, anthropomorphism, and uh, artificial um, intelligence. In addition, Rantala is a web editor at Finnish philosophical journal Nina Nine, Nina Nine. Yes, Nina. It's okay. Nina Nine. Uh, the title of his presentation is "Algorithmic System as a Medium for Transindividual Collective." Uh, please, you hope. Welcome. Yes. yes, thank you very much. Let's see. I... Let's see if I can share my screen. Mm. Sorry. Mm, 
I don't know why it's not working. You want to share? I was just putting a micro PowerPoint slide. Mm -hmm. so. Like. Just a second. It's okay. Uh, I think I have to restart my Firefox <laughs> to make it work. If that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. If you want your, you know, you can begin yeah, it would with be nice if I could some chat, some chat, so yeah. you have to. Yeah. Okay, just a try And to anticipate something of the presentation. Yeah. Okay, we lose Yuho. <laughs> He's uh, now uh, restarting his Firefox. He's coming back. Yeah, let's see if it works now. <laughs> Are you seeing it now? Perfectly. Yes. Okay, so yes, sorry about that. <laughs> and yes, first of all, thank you for inviting me here. I'm very honor honored, honored to be here talking with An Andrea and Pedro. So I uh, hopefully my presentation is as good as Pedro. So uh, we'll see. So anyway, I'm talking about uh, algorithmic systems as a medium for trans-individual collective, a case of blockchain technology. So first of all, there's a question mark at the end of the title, what am I title? Uh, this is, that is because um, I'm not quite sure if this, uh, if the blockchain technology technology itself has any kind of I mean in the end kind of any kind of real medi mediating power for trans individuality but, but I'm hopefully I can give you some points why I think so uh, and secondly I am here although the title is referring to algorithm systems and I'm just shortly commenting on them. I am mostly using blockchain technology as an example of algorithmic systems. But anyway, um, here are the contents. So first, just shortly about the background of this presentation and then shortly about the algorithmic systems and then on something about Simon Don's ideas on technical or digital objects and then, of course, I'm introducing again shortly blockchain technology. And finally, at the five, five, uh, fifth chapter, I'm trying to give some ideas, first of all, of trans individuality, but then as uh, blockchain as a trans individual mediator. And then the conclusions. So, uh, uh, this is based on <clears throat> partly on my PhD research, which was as already is mentioned that it's about Simon Don's philosophy and ontology of algorithms. I would probably summarize it here. So, 
But anyway, uh, on the other hand, this is based on my article, which was uh, published in Culture, Theory and Critic magazine or journal, uh, titled Blockchain as a Medium for Transindividual Collective. But I'm hopefully updating some points here and it's not probably completely same as the article. So, for it, uh, so because the article has some, uh, I think it has some flaws, so <laughs> I'm hopefully kind of getting, uh, overcoming those flaws here, hopefully. Anyway, so in addition to Simon Dunn's work, I'm using here excellent commentaries and research books by, or research material by, of course, Andreas book, uh, Andreas book, and of course, Andreas also other writings, Muriel Compass, uh, Simon Mills and Jack Heiss and uh, Colin Ferraratos books. So the, especially the, I had to mention the Colin Ferraratos book, which uh, is titled uh, Prospective Philosophy of Software, a Simon Donian study. I think it has some nice and kind of short and clear uh, summarization of Simon Don's idea and in of course and how would you uh, summarizations of uh, modes of existence of digital objects if you will so uh, uh, the algorithm systems that I'm referring in on the title and probably at the end of the presentation uh, are I would call almost every all, all kind of systems that is utilizing digital technology and algorithms as algorithm systems. Of course, the algorithm is understood here as a complex and dynamic network of processes, so not just as written code. So, algorithm as a kind of executed program or as as a process. So, and as a kind of network of processes, algorithm can, can be understood as a and and uh, intertwining of technology, materiality, that is hardware, software, and metals, milieu, human action, and human thinking. So in, pre uh, in practice, that means like uh, artificial intelligence applications, social media platforms, automated decision making, and also robots. Of course, the problem here is that blockchain technology is not is of course just one one kind of algorithm system. So although there might be some kind of general points which could be made as a blockchain as a kind of mediator for trans individuality that could be applied applied to other algorithm systems. I think the more, most likely there will be these points will be fit just for like a social media platform and automated decision making. Because robots are, <laughs> although they use algorithms, they are, you know, quite different systems at the end. So here's just some quite quick notes on the ideas of technical and digi or digital object. And I, I took this from the before mentioned Ferrarato's book, because I think they are quite nice and short. So, and they kind of had this short and clear <laughs> summarizations of the, of how I think the technical object and digital object are in connection with it, each other. So a technical object is an object that deploys technicity. This technicity is functionality, agency, and the mutual influence of three scales, the element, the individual, the ensemble, in increasingly ex extensive synergy concretization, that is in con concretization. So the digital object is a finished software program that functions correctly and offers a specific range of fun functionality to the user. The notion of digital object is an intermediate concept derived from the functionality unity of the object. So, in my opinion, the blockchain, as we hopefully see when I'm 
trying to <coughs> point out these uh, functional functionalities of blockchain systems that it can be taught as a technical, technical or digital object. So, what is then a blockchain? Uh, first of all, it can be said that it is a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized database with a highly original system for organizing information and human action. It was first introduced with Bitcoin in 2008 and was sort of started or put up in 2009. Uh, and after a couple of years, about 2012, came Ethereum, which can be taught as a second generation. Now, there are uh, public or decentralized blockchains, but also private and semi-centralized. And I'm here focusing mostly on about this public or decentralized blockchain, because I think that they are those which might have some properties that, that enables them to mediate trans individuality. So in this public decentralized blockchain, there is no third party that controls the system. And thus, they require consensus mechanisms. So, um, and for example, especially the second generation systems, Ethereum can be used for uh, as a platform for token system, financial derivatives and stable value currencies, identity and reputation systems, decentralized file storage, or cloud comp computing, savings, e-wallets, commodity insurances, uh, decentralized autonomous organizations, and on-chain decentralized marketplaces. So, in ad addition, this, for example, this spring has been... Sorry, you, just to let you know that the PowerPoint is not moving from the first page uh, oh. on our side. So. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> I was already at the fourth or fifth slide. Yes, I, I was telling you in the chat. Uh, so maybe, do you see it I, now better? Yeah, yes. Yeah, we see so, the second one now. Second algorithmic systems. Okay, yes. Well, I was, <laughs> I was already... I'm sorry about that. Okay, maybe I'll just continue. I was going to this slide now. Okay, so here are some two examples of blockchain technologies. First of all, it's Bitcoin, which is mostly just a cryptocurrency focused. That meaning that Bitcoin is just a cryptocurrency and not anything else. And it uses as a consensus mechanism, as a this proof of work system or mining, which means that as it's a decentralized system, it needs miners to distribute their computing power to the use of the network, so as that the system can be, so that the transactions of bot Bitcoin can be validated and added to the system. And of course, that the mining also upkeeps the security and in the end, creates new Bitcoins. So the system is immutable, public and decentralized ledger that is constantly updated to every user. Now the Ethereum uh, or the second generation systems, Ethereum based systems, uh, they offer smart contracts, which are as the name suggests, are automated contracts and they or in the other, uh, to put it other ways, it enables executing code inside the blockchain database. And uh, so the Ethereum based systems are platform or er environmental focused. So they are not just cryptocurrencies and mostly the token or the cryptocurrency of the system is used inside of the system, for example, execute the smart contracts. So it, it has such functionalities inside the system. 
So most of them are also using the same proof of work system as Bitcoin, but then there are, for example, proof of stake systems, which uh, try to minimize the energy consumption of proof of work by focusing the, this consensus mechanism at the hands of a small group of admins, which are selected through different kind of rules. Uh, so the system is also same kind of immutable, public and decentralized, and it is also updated to every user. And in the end, they are also open source in the sense that the idea of Ethereum has been that it could be used to create kind of more more systems which which are based on which are kind of on top of the Ethereum system, if you, if you will. So the blockchain can be thought as a in its concretical concretized application, for example, as a Bitcoin, uh, it can be thought as a technical individual that creates a complex network, complex network consisting of elements made of software like algorithm and data and hardware, which drives reciprocal causality between different elements, zones and processes of blockchain platform as well as engagement with human action. So it, it, is, it has connection also to the ensemble in a kind of Simondonian sense that is created by a technical individual, which is the blockchain, which is also uh, made of token currents uh, or kinds of users, admins, for example, miners, developers and other spokespersons. It is also connected to technicity by through the connection with others, not also developers, those who uh, through discussion boards and so on. Uh, it also has a certain genesis from, for example, Bitcoin is a collection of older, older technologies and technical elements, if you will. Uh, and it, of course, has, can be there can be pointed out some continuous or discontinuous evolution in Simontonian sense. For example, the systems are of course updated or can be updated or there can be completely new systems like transformation from Bitcoin to, uh, from Bitcoin to Ethereum. However, uh, when talking about blockchains ability to mediate trans individuality, I'm here referring it mostly as a technical schema or more precisely as technical essence, which indicates certain inherent coherence that is preserved through evolution. So, for Simon, there are physical, vital, vital and physical collective individuation. The living being constantly strives to preserve its metastability and it continues its physical individuation at psychic and collective level. So the individual is always only a phase of its becoming. The constant metastability of the individual is rendered possible by the unexhausted pre-individual potentials. These potentials are created, uh, these potentials create tensions or problematics which the individual must resolve by individuating further. Individuation as a trans transductive process of the exchange of information and uh, information de and restructures the individual as well as the milieu and their relations. <clears throat> Resolving is achieved by restructuring inner and outer relations so that they are compatible with the tensions, meaning that the tensions are not precisely resolved, which could mean stabilization. As the living being strives to resolve the problematics positioned by the milieu or physical domain in general, it confronts the problems that require more than its individual inner outer structures can handle. This leads the individual to continue with vital individuation with psychic and collective individuation, that is through trans-individual relation. Uh, the living being itself is a perpetual, perpetual putting into relation of 
psychic and collective. In the living individual, there is a zone which can be called the subject. This zone relates the pre-individual potentials of all individuals that take part in the collective. It structures collectively the potential through production and exchange of, of for example, significations, and furthermore, it assures the relation to the self and the world. Thus, the trans individual is the systematic unity of internal and external psychic, that is psychic and collective. Thus, the collective emerges on the one hand from exchange of significant significations between individuating subjects, so that the subjects also are individuated by creating norms, beliefs, words, and concepts. On the other hand, the emergency of collective is trans-individual operation that gathers together living beings as a psych psychic collective subject. So especially in this second sense, blockchain can mediate the trans-individuation. So the trans-individual corresponds to the part of the group which holds individual calls it ident identities and makes individual coinci coincident and communicate through significations. Mm, so the basic mode of collective being the inter-individual relations, which does not require new individuation, only simple exchange and analog between individuals. The individuals cannot resolve their individual problematics in this inter-individuality. The individual that enters into relation with others appears to itself in its own eyes as a sum of, sum of total of social images, that is, as a functional representation that others make of it. Thus, the, the trans individual requires slightly simplifying simultaneous self reflection on relations with others and on, on the aspect of present individu inter individual situation that prevents the perception of existence of pre-individual. So, in trans-individual relation, the subject in, engage in a transformative relation uh, re, to reunite the pre-individual shares in them. Thus, individuals can give birth to a new reality and move towards true collective. The seed of trans-individuality is already at the first phase, carried by the individual, as form of pre-individual, as an unstructured background, so from which a new individuation can emerge. Through trans-individual action, the individuals, as the elements of a system, discover a structure and functional organization that integrates and resolves the problematic exceeding of their own capacity. So trans-individuality is also a solution to problems or challenges disparities at the collective level. Oh, so for Simon Don, the technical object, in so far as it has been invented, taught and willed and taken up by a human subject, becomes a medium and symbol of a relationship which, would, which we would like to name trans-individual. The technical object as an invention is crystallization of human activity or gesture. However, this crystallization remains in technical objects even after work is accomplished. The object is created through an act of thinking or invention that transfers a thinking process as an analogy from one structure to another. So the humans individuate that is they search relations that are similar to their own mental functioning and realize them within nature, thus creating analogies or crystallizations of an operational scheme and of a thought to resolve a problem. The object as an invented analogy bears information and assembles together the inventive and organizational capacities of the subjects, thus leading way to the trans-individual. So, so we can consider the blockchain as a platform that pulls the pre-individual potentials together. That is, as a platform that works as a, the use Melania Swan's expression zone of participation. 
The pre-individual is already with individuals, and blockchain is a protocol through which individuals can share their potential and continue the initial individuation. If this platform were centralized, it would not cultivate the differences of the individuals and consequently could not provide the frame of pre-individual potentiality. That is, there would not be as many possibilities to individuate. The centralized platform is a closed community usually aimed at the predefined goal, connecting individuals on the inter-individual level. So the true, in, true if you will, trans-individuality is not goal-oriented, but rather opens up the field of pre-individual that is, in a way, already within each individual and reveals different possibilities repre represented by different individuals of being and of life to each involved individual. Thus, the trans-individuality is also connected to decentralization. So we can say that this is the strength or promise, if there is any, of blockchain. To create truly decentralized system, to crystallize human potential and activity in the organization and organizing. In other words, blockchain can be seen as a crystallization of the power to create methods and processes of decentralized organization, which can lead to further individuation by individuals themselves. In addition, blockchain is a model, technical essence, that leads to further individuation by freely organizing individuals through constantly reinvent, uh, constantly reinvention of new digital spaces and platforms, that is, practical blockchain applications. This is a constant concretization of the mental and the operative, operative operational and thus the founda foundation of continuity of trans individual. Uh, so the individuals act as the elements of a system and discover structures and functional organization blockchain that resolves the problem that problematic that exceeds their own capacity. Uh, however, every practical application in itself delimits the relation to the domain of the pre-individual. That is, the application can present to the individual only a certain spectrum of potentialities, thus require new individuations. So now some conclusions, if they are not written too small. <laughs> so <clears throat> overall, blockchain can be thought as an idea, a technical essence that has already a few working applications. The idea and the applications, if not yet able to provide completely new and innovative ways of connecting and sharing, are at least during debate on the nature of the present model of organization and their functions. So I'm just I've listed here some ideas. If you want to, uh, as a through the blockchain technology, create some general points of algorithmic systems and their ability to mediate trans-individuality. So the first is idea of automation, which in sense can be understood here as a kind of, in a way that, well, I, did, I think that in the same way as Deleuze write on his cinema books about differences between painting and cinema. That, for example, in, when people saw paintings, they had to kind of add the movement into the paintings. But when people see what cinema, there is the the, the movement is already in the in the art. So so the so they can focus their uh, consciousness to other things. So I'm thinking automation here same way that the, when when if the if some small or not so significant actions or functions are automated so maybe people can kind of focus on other things and the second thing about distribution of information means just that the of course these platforms especially when decentralized can share and collect distributed information and then offer them to the use of the individuals or subjects uh, then there is this distribution and circulation of affects, which of course in case of blockchain technologies is 
kind of difficult thing, but maybe some kind of rigid, rigid, simple effects can be taught to be present in at least some kind of algorithmic systems, like in social media platforms. Uh, and finally, the enable, enabling new action. Uh, this is quite uh, maybe same same thing as the in connection with the automation. So. But in addition, you can think that, of course, the automation and the enabling new actions is also a bad thing because, of course, it's if the if the system has automated functions, it always restricts other possibilities. So, uh, just to summarize, blockchain can be thought as a protocol to create truly decentralized way of organizing, at least theoretically. So. There is private or semi-private uh, that is centralized and distributed will provide only inter-individual relations. So I'm just I thought that this trans-individually could be seen here at, the, at three levels. So first as an invented object, which means just that the, as Simon Don said that the technical objects already are uh, symbols or even mediators for trans-individuality because they are invented technical objects. And the B is that which I was here trying to talk and talk about as the protocol for decentralization or organization. And finally, as an open source toolkit for creating your own automated organizations, for example, these decentralized autonomous organizations, which has been talked about with blockchain. Though of course, this is also connected to the first point, but this just means that the that this open source possibilities, of course, those people who are able to, you know, understand the code or the technology itself, so it just creates this this kind of maybe horizontal of possibilities. And finally, as there are of course a lot of problems with probably with the Simondon's ideas, but also with, the, of course, with the blockchain technology itself. And I haven't mentioned them before here in this presentation. So, so here are some three main problems. First of all, of course, the energy consumption of the consensus mechanisms. For example, Bitcoin's mining is, is using just like <laughs> too, much, too much energy. So, so that's key problems with it. So. Uh, and the second one is the immutability, meaning that the that especially the decentralized blockchains, uh, the database cannot be changed or modified except through this consensus mechanism, for example, mining. So that's very problematic when because that require uh, that requires the so that the most of the miners agree these changes. So updating the system is difficult or if, if you want to reverse for example the transaction in bitcoin that is just impossible to do and finally decentralization is hard to achieve in practice but not impossible that just means that the the, the kind of what i called here as a true decentralization is just yeah it is just kind of it's more like a theoretical thing because mostly when we are moving to the practical applications, they are not really that <laughs> decentralized, except maybe, for example, Bitcoin. There has been probably an era in the history of Bitcoin when it has been kind of very decentralized. At first it wasn't because there was so little of the users and just little, there was not much of miners, but when the user numbers grow, then it might have some kind of balance with the kind of the distribution of the miners around the world. So, so in in that point, it might have been a kind of decentralized. But now nowadays, because the mining is done mostly through these kind of big mining, so-called mining pools, which are and the biggest one are, for example, in China, which usually 
are kind of companies that that have well they are kind of controlling almost like let's say like 70 percent of the mining or something like that if i remember the correct so but anyway maybe i can stop now and here are some references Okay, I'm sorry about the problems with the PowerPoint. No problem, no problem. My friend, Yuho. Thank you very much, Yuho. Rantala, we continue here in Transi Individual Electronics and the Digital Table in the Seminario Simon Don in Disciplina, um, thir the third week. Uh, and it continues, I think, three weeks more. Um, we were hearing the, the, the to you, Horantala. First was Pedro Ferreira, and now uh, our friend Andrea Bardin uh, from Oxford uh, University, University, senior lecturer in politics at Oxford Brookes University. Andrea works on the relationship between science and political thought from early modernity to the present and has written extensively on Thomas Hobbes, I know, you know, I recommend that, uh, and Gilbert Simon, no, I recommend it too. He's the author of Epistemology and Political Philosophy in Gilbert Simon, Don, Individuation Techniques, Social System, uh, in spring editions. The title of the Media, medium presentation is uh, what is a medium? That is the type. The medium will ask himself what is a medium. Notes on the transindividual entanglement of technology, nature, and culture. So, yeah. Andrea. Ciao. Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao Andrea. Thank you, everywhere. Thank you. Um also for to, to Tiago for inviting me to Diego for being here and and Pedro and and Ivo for the patience of, of, of speaking to someone who has uh, actually very little to say because I mean it's I'm here for learning of this stuff I, I really it's, it's, it's interesting for me to um, to to realize how uh, Simon Don uh, is being used uh, um, well, I wouldn't say as a framework, as an inspiration for building frameworks to explore areas that are so important today, uh, socially and politically. Um, what what I'm, I'm doing, I, so I was traveling yesterday from Italy uh, by car to the UK, which is a very long thing. And, and that's why I didn't, I mean, I didn't have time to prepare anything. And I, this was already planned, so it's not just a last minute thing. But in the end, I did prepare something. Uh, because uh, uh, I thought that I might just say a few things about uh, um, uh, how I see, I see Simon Don tried to um, to conceptualize a trans individual, I think, in a way that fits uh, what you two guys have been doing so far. I'm talking about uh, the medium, how the media become a medium of the trans individual relation and how they uh, this medium expands and becomes a sort of network and a system and a, and a technical individual as well. Um, and I was reflecting on these uh, um, after reading your papers and and actually also after reading uh, um, because I went back to Diego's paper on, on money and trust um, that he wrote some time ago. Um, and I, I was Going back to Simon Don and and actually and this is my medium today. Uh, I'm I'm and I was checking how he finishes the uh, so I'm doing some you know philo philology. Uh, I was doing um, I was writing is rewriting his conclusion after the first uh, 
time it writes it in the individuation uh, and, and what it does in 58 he speaks about the the, the well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you want to hear the French maybe I go to the English which is now published so here it is this is finally we have this one too um, and it's good because I mean, many more people can read Simondo now. Um, now. Now, at the end of the, at the conclusion of the, of the individuation, um, he talks about uh, uh, the wild act, which is act four, uh, uh, um, and he talks about the subject. It's an it is an ethical conclusion, and he talks about the subject uh, uh, when it becomes an absolute individual, close individual. It repeats itself, perpetually recommends itself, and is reduced to the individual. And but it means uh, it's reduced to the absolute individual, detached uh, from everything, um, detached from the world and from other subjects, and abandons. It is abandon. It abandons its role of transfer. He's talking about human beings. Uh, and the subject reduced to the absolute individual, it abandons its role of tra transfer. Uh, while ethics is about continuing this role of transfer, and and the conclusion, the last three lines, and tending toward the continuous, the reconstructs in an organized form of communication or reality as vast as the pre-individual system, across the individual, understood as the amplificative transfer emerging from nature. Societies become a world. Now, all this stuff disappears in 1989 when he publishes the second part of Individual Show. This one was never, well, I mean, when it is published in 1989 as a conclusion of the L'Individuation Psychique and Collective, it disappears, it is cancelled. But what is added in that edition in 89 is the note complementaire, the complementary note. Now, in the complementary note, what Simon Don does is, instead of this, he has a conclusion of one of the notes in which he talks about uh, the machine. And what is striking, he talks about the machine exactly in the same way as he was talking about the individual at the end of the individuation. Uh, and it talks about the machine, it says, between the community and the individual isolated in himself, is there is the machine. And this machine is open to the world. It goes beyond communal reality to establish relation with nature. Um, now, what I find interesting is that actually, I mean, what it's telling us, I think, is can you can you hear me? Because my line is not getting going very well, and sometimes okay, I was like, um, it is not relevant what kind of individual the mediator is. What is relevant is what the mediator, the medium, we might say, if we want to use this term, does. It amplifies something in puts in contact uh, different aspects of reality, immediates between different orders of magnitude, between different milieus, uh, in transport schemas, it amplifies them, and basically it produces invention. Now, I think that this might, I mean, I don't know if the interpretation makes any sense, but it might show that Simon Don at a certain point wants to show that, you know, uh, it's not about human beings only. And the trans individual itself is not about human beings only. On the contrary, it has never been about human beings only. Now, when it talks about the trans individual, Simon talks about the relation of relation, which is in course of individuation and precedes the terms it connects. Otherwise, it will be a mere rapport, he says. Rapport. Um, and it, it must have a central zone uh, in order to be um, a process of relation. Um, an active core, which is invisible, will be invisible for any to a philosophy of being, and only is accessible uh, through a philosophy of ontogenetic relations. That is a philosophy of individuation. 
Uh, it is, however, unclear how this central zone, uh, obscure zone uh, of the islomorphic schema, um, which is full of potentials, how it emerges in the first place. So is it a sort of origin of the relational field? Uh, what is it? Um, now, the, the interesting bit is this central zone is nothing mysterious uh, in Simondon. It really is the acting of the medium, I think. Now, the role of the central zone of relation can be played by individual subjects, uh, by acts, by machines. Uh, that's different terminology uses in different places. Um, and and it, it, goes about, it talks about the, the individual as a mediating term as an allagmatic being, which always works as an amplificative transfer. And then there are other examples also in, uh, uh, for instance, I, I, I could access a book because it's my office. I cannot access the office yet for coronavirus, coronavirus restrictions, uh, but I will be able on Monday. Uh, and in Imagination and Invention, it talks about the Imago mm, as a structure of conversion. I had this in my notes. Um, in a, which is a very Lacanian, you know, a definition he gives about the imago a structural conversion, which is with a double entry, a double entry. Uh, since on the one hand it is related with the I, and on the other hand to the symbolic order, uh, it's kind of you know, there's a mediation which is very technical, psych psychical, psychoanalytic, and so on. And Simona is claiming that the world of the imaginary uh, prepares access to what is usually called the symbolic in, in the development of, of the child, precisely because the symbolic, uh, since the beginning, had contributed to the emergence of the former, uh, of, uh, of, of the imaginary on the kid. Um, now, so we have to pay attention when we read Simon on that because I mean when we talk about the medium, the mediator, we think we think about the medium as a milieu. I don't think the medium is a milieu in Simon Don. When it talks about the medium, the mediator is a thing. Hmm? It's something that has emerged from a milieu and it crosses different milieus and it makes connections possible. Um and the subject is one of these things, but not only. And the subject is not only, you know, uh, the human subject. Uh, so, I mean, as we know, in, in, in Simondon, there's no fixed anthropology about what humans are. Uh, and, and this is because, you know, humans are not the same thing depending on what they do. I mean, depending on what they do, they become different things. Uh, and Which is the same for machines and, and everything. Um, now, why am I saying this? Because I was thinking while I was reading your, your papers, uh, um, that is, it is so interesting because I mean, when you talk about uh, what you're talking about, this mediation, it's continuous mediation in the way which it produces um, trans individual individuation. Um, it is not clear, not because of your fault, <laughs> because it is not clear in, in itself, whether we are talking about because we don't know probably whether we are talking about uh you know electronic life or uh, algorithmic systems uh, as mediums uh, media that are individuals or systems whether they are systems individual systems or milieu already uh, and this is not irrelevant i think because the tension between the individual and the milieu the way in which uh, an individual emerges out of different milieus let's take let's talk about uh, the individual subject the human individual subject which is a production of you know a natural history in a natural milieu in actually in different natural milieus uh, and then a technological history uh, and then uh, a social history symbolic history and then an individual singular you know trajectory of the, that specific individual being and only those four processes together produce an individual which is a very complex thing um, but then we have larger individuals individuals that can become networks like in the case of the individuals you were talking about, about no? the, the the blockchain for instance 
hmm, as a technical individual. Uh, and technical individuals in particular, they tend to become something so connected, interconnected, to transform uh, themselves, to, to change their own nature, I would say. They, they become milieu, milieus themselves that generate new individuals. But, and and the, here it is very relevant whether those uh, milieu, which kind of individual, individuation they produce, if they still capable of producing individuation, because automatism can be a problem. You can have this kind of, in, you know, inter, inter individual relations and the, the suppression of trans individual relations, um, by which I mean, you know, basically time and space become contracted in automatism and the way in which we are used to think about individual, uh, so, sorry, collective trans individual individuation, which also requires uh, emotive effectivity and this kind of relation that take time. Uh, so it's a big question. Are we still capable of generating anything like that uh, in, in that in that media? But probably that's not, you know, if electronic life, for instance, or any sort of electronic life is not life. It's just, you know, we have different kinds of lives. And we are living different kinds of lives at the same time. Probably it's not even an alternative between living online and offline because we live at the same time. Uh, some lives that are online only, other lives that are offline only, and other lives that are a mix of online and offline. So the, the, that it will be, you know, uh, reasoning in terms of gender and species talk about online, offline only at that level, because it's rather more complicated. Uh, so, I mean, thinking about this tension between the individual and the milieu opens a whole set of, of problems because we, we have to, to be frank with ourselves about what we're talking about when we're talking about, you know, the dominance of, 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 the, of digital technologies, which is not there yet, mm -hmm. because the world is globalized, but it's not dominated entirely by digital technology. We can guess that it might happen. But the point is, uh, well, it's the same question with capitalism, right? Uh, capitalism is, is now globalized. Can we still talk about capitalism rather than capitalisms? So do we have the same? economic base everywhere. I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and digital technologies. So, I mean, is, is it really possible that one single system, you know, technical individual becomes so naturalized that, uh, that it becomes uh, the environment as such? I don't think we are there. I'm not even sure that this is even possible, but maybe it is. Uh, and that point, my question is uh, uh, well, a very political question. How do we act? Now, if we follow Simon on this, we cannot act on the milieu. I mean, we can act on the milieu through mediations. We have to produce mediators. We have to play the game. Uh, I was thinking, in a sense, uh, Um, the trans individual as a milieu is today. Uh, I mean, the production, uh, you know, control and, 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 and production of human beings is uh, the site of neoliberal politics uh, against which we need a politics of, of the biotechno symbolic milieu understood in, in Simon Doyen terms, maybe, maybe not necessarily. Um, but our action is never a direct action on the milieu because as such, but we act on within small and partial milieus and, and, and we construct media that circulate and give new shapes to the milieu. They contribute to this. Uh, um, now we have to assume, I think that we want to change human nature. Uh, I know it sounds a bit you know, scary, the idea of assuming this responsibility, but actually the thing is that 
acting on, on the biotechnocultural milieu in order to change human nature uh, is probably just what happens anyway. Hmm? It, it is necessary because human nature changes anyway and because it is constantly being changed by neoliberal policies. And if, if we don't play this game, uh, the others are going to win, quite simply. Um, I mean, a milieu that selects humans on the basis of competition, individual success, hybris, belief in an ultimate meaning of life, is not the same as one that selects humans on the basis of collaboration, success, solving collective problems, technically, uh, in similar terms, uh, the awareness of the lack of a meaning of life and the courage of facing it. I mean, these are two completely different ideas of human beings. And and I don't think there's a way of, of not in being involved in, in the one we want to, to, to contribute to. Um, so also and another point I want to make, I mean, the pre-individual potentials that associate to our species, uh, when we talk about, you know, life, the creativity of life, the, I mean, this stuff is not eternal. <laughs> I mean, if we were lucky enough uh, as, as the biological beings, the biotechnical beings, to develop some, you know, potentials that we are still we still have to invent, to create, there's nothing that grants their persistence forever. Uh, uh, it's that, written nowhere because we are aware we we don't have an, an essence that is there forever. We also must be aware that we might be one day lose this, hmm? uh, we must find you know, a suitable milieu for these potentials to reproduce themselves, to amplify themselves, both culturally and biologically. So I don't think there's any essential spontaneity of life. There is a war for the selection of different kinds of pre-individual potentials. Uh, and this is a very long term uh, war. And, and the battlefields, some of the battlefields of this war, I think they are being naturalized. Like capitalism, I'm not saying capitalism is good, I'm saying capitalism is everywhere. Communication technologies, not to speak by, uh, about biotechnologies. I mean, this stuff is getting everywhere. Uh, um, and these are, these are, you know, technical beings that are becoming milieus in which we have to play our uh, our game I think human variants which in turn circulate and change the milieu itself and and we are part of this election um now what kind of means we have i mean there's a variety traditionally of violent uh, uh, means and revolutionary and frontal attacks uh, to this uh, um, selection of of the human that goes against the trans individual individuation i would say uh, i'm not sure violent attacks are, are uh, very oh, well you know i have nothing against violence <laughs> okay as such it's just a means at any other, uh, and and those who you know preach uh, non-violence uh, are usually those who are in the position of uh, uh, being able to exercise violence at the highest level. Mm. Uh, but of course, I mean, so I don't think violence is, is such. You know, there's no good or bad as such, and violence is not even. Uh, the problem with violence is that it only works if it has a long-term positive impact. And I think this is quite rare, for instance. Um, something similar could be said of populism. I don't think it is easy to find an historical example of long-term political effects of populism we would like to subscribe. Um, and perhaps, you know, um, Non-violence without moral pretense can be effective as a form of resistance. And, um, but the thing is, what kind of tools do we have to produce in order for this to happen? Uh, you know, um, 
what kind of decentralization do we want to power? Do we want total decentralization? Because total complete decentralization might mean, you know, leaving, uh, you know, the organizational uh, um, effort uh, to someone else, to other agencies. Um, what I'm saying is, it's not that I have something to say about what to do, but I would say that if we think about political movements, political actions, uh, which are you know, most importantly technological experiments, like the ones we we're talking about, huh? but also thinking experiments in terms of how to conceive um, the trans individual, uh, we should also start assessing these, what we do. Uh, well, of course, not in, in terms of human rights or abstract things only could be useful is that not crucial um but also not also in terms not only in terms of you know the scale of uh you know the political gain but probably and and being very ambitious too ambitious probably um assess political movements at the scale of the development of the human species how powerful are they as techno symbolic arts do they produce long term change in the trans individual milieu and dance in human nature what changes are we talking about i'm not talking about eugenetics of course but i'm talking exactly about you know what goes against the very idea of eugenetics which is based on you know the principle that we know how human beings should be that's eugenetics now, if our principles is, is that we don't know what human beings should be, and we, and we frankly want to keep the, this as open as possible, hmm, still, that's something we should do. Hmm. Um, so maybe a eugenetics of the trans individual that could be a provocative way of framing it. Um, okay, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going too far. I'm going too far. Uh, because I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> and, and I think that both your your papers were posing problems that should be assessed at this level. So when we are asking ourselves uh, uh, what happens with electronic life, what kind of values, uh, Pedro is asking himself, what kind of values are entailed in electronic life. So he's trying to define electronic life. Uh, and it's fine. It's trying to, to see how this is uh, intersect with social values, how it changes social values. Um, and and when Yuho is talking about algorithm systems, uh, and also he's asking himself, so what happens when we start blockchain or Ethereum or all sorts of uh, this when it produced with technical this kind of technical technical individuals? What what happens to humans? Um, I mean, I'm not asking you what happens. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what happens because my, 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 what you imagine you know, uh, is happening when we're talking about these kind of things. Because I suspect this is not something I will be ever able to uh, to answer because age is important. These kind of things, I think. And Gonzalo, maybe you know, is with uh, forever young. Uh, might be there when an answer comes, but I won't probably. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. Very interesting. What are you saying to us? Um, I think it's. Uh, I, I, I agree, I, I have some notes, but I think it's the moment to hear what uh, Pedro first and, and after Pedro Yujo have to say, answer, comment. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, it's very good to, to hear your thoughts, Andrea. Um, uh, uh, your work has been an encouragement 
for my research, especially because you, um, not on your talk today, but on your book, you trace some important um, relations between Simon Don and the French socio-anthropological tradition, which for me as a sociologist, as an anthropologist, it, it, it's very important. And, and also listening to Joho's talk and having read his his paper and it's it's uh, it's it's very nice because we we I feel less lonely in doing a, a Simondonian inspired social theory or social reflections. Uh, it's it's very good to be to be able to think together um, about. The, in the collective individuation and, and the trans individual and their relation with with um, with te technology. Um, the, there's a passage that you cited in your presentation, you that's very important for me is that when Simon Don says that the technical object is the symbol and support of the trans individual relation. And as a sociologist trying to um, benefit from this, these contributions, um, this, this is a very important idea. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's very good to, to be able to, to talk now. Uh, 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 I don't have, I have some comments, maybe some questions to, to, to you who, uh, I was thinking, uh, you, if the the way you talk about algorithmic systems as medium for um, a, a trans individual, uh, is it in the sense of that um, passage from Simon Don that the object, the technical object, is symbol and support for the trans individual? That, that, is, is this the the sense you are using the word medium, like the uh, algorithmic systems as medium for a trans individual collective as algorithmic systems as symbol and support for a trans individual collective is this what you're trying to 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 say um, maybe you could talk about that and um i ha i have many um, difficulties in 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 thinking about blockchain because uh what one reason because of my ignorance the technical ignorance on the on the proper operations and, and technicalities but because in my mind uh, and, and this is a question for you in in, in my mind uh, blockchain is based on the idea of, of certification of of having um of assuring of having certainty about the property or the titles and their attributions, like very jur juridical. Uh, I, so, um, uh, I'm, I would like to know if, how, if, 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 if I'm wrong, because if if it is based on certification and private property, um, is it not um, involved in something more? Uh, more akin to a closed system, like a closed machine, instead of an open system of an open mach machine that maybe would not be based on private property or an, in a system of closed certification. This is a question. Okay. okay. And, and one more thing that your presentation made, made me think is about the the place of invention in the blockchain technology because as you as you rightly said um the technical object for simon don is 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 understood as an object of continuing invention and not as something that is invented and and then it's complete so um you you you, you talked about this in your in your talk uh, and then you said that maybe um, this part is a little is a little concentrated in few people. The this invention part, this creative engagement with the technology, and and so in my in as I see it, 
and 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 and, and I don't don't know if I see it very well. Most of people involved in in this algorithm six algorithmic system of the blockchain are users and not developers or miners. And, and then maybe you could talk about this this question of the where is the invention in blockchain, and because I think this uh, for Simon Don. Uh, the trans individual um, in technology is linked to this act of invention. So thank you for your your, your talk, and I hope to hear you a, a, a little more from you today. I'd like just to make a comment on Andrea Bardin's um, comment that it's very important, I think, to think about the medium, the relation of medium with with uh, with the milieu, right? Because um, we can think about the relation of the individual and its or his associated milieu. And we could think about this relation as being mediated by a medium that could be the technical object. The technical object is that which mediates it's the relation of the human with the world and and so it's a it's, it's a, like a, a, a crystallization a concretization of the relation of the relation of the individual and his associated milieu and so there is not a clear distinction as i see it in the milieu and in the media but there are degrees of concretization that kind of detach the medium from the milieu as this re re relation um, um, gaining more reality, this realism of relations. Uh, so this is just, I'm, I'm just sharing things that I thought while I was listening to you. And I, you began talking about Simon Don as a framework for thinking and, and it made me uh, think that, um, uh, for me as a social scientist, uh, Simon Don's place as a like a theoretical framework is uh, the, an analogous to the place where uh, Gilles Deleuze is, his, the thought of Gilles Deleuze, or the researchers of Bruno Latour. Um, it, it's a, a little more this of the same the, the same kind of contributions that these thinkers offer for me as a social scientist, because they're they're trying to think this um, these association processes that um, perform institutions and perform um, 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 collectives, and but in ways in which these institutions and collections never um, detach from the very act of producing of performing them so simon don uh, w helps me in this same um, um care of not separating the result of the association processes from the very association processes and just one more comment uh the you talked about capitalisms in in your comment and it's crucial to talk about this simon don it, it's a kind of a black a blind spot in Simon Don's thought, capitalism, and it's crucial that people like you who are um, thinking um, economic systems uh, uh, um, with Simon Don, I know Diego Viana is also doing that, And uh, but what I would like to say is that uh, in the case of my res research, current research on the social agency of Silicon, what I'm um, um, finding out is that there would be no miniaturization without this uh, strictly um, profit-seeking enterprise. I, I mean, the, the whole process of microelectronics uh, is, it, it has some scientific research, especially in the 40s, in the 50s, but since the 60s, it's mostly uh, like uh, Moore's law. It's, it's a completely, it, economical and entrepreneurial um, um, drive that, that drives this technological um, development. So there would be no microelectronics without the capitalism of Silicon Valley. And so uh, that's it. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, you who want to answer, comment, continue with answer, answering, uh, questioning. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so thank you very much, Andrea, for your excellent comments, comment presentation, or how do you, do you want to call it? But <laughs> great. And yes, I, I also have been enjoying your book on Simon Don, and it's my one of my main sources for Simon Don's thinking of either in addition of Simon Don's own books, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know where the beginning. Uh, uh, well, maybe I can answer the Pedro's excellent questions, or at, at least try to answer them firstly. So. So you were asking me about if I'm talking about medium in in the sense as Simon Don is using it in that specific specific quotation point. Uh, uh, and yes, I, I think I am <laughs> thinking it in, in that way. Uh, so uh, I, I I'm I'm kind of just thinking very simply in. In, the, in this case, that it's just like you know, something that uh, something that can just like some uh, something that is you know always kind of well you know just like something that we are we are kind of focusing on and we what we we are kind of seeing through uh, maybe experiencing and seeing through and well I, I don't know if I mean I think as Andrea already pointed out that this uh, maybe there is something kind of milieu like or environment kind of idea at the same time going on here especially when you're talking about blockchain platforms or algorithmic platforms in in general, because uh, many of these examples, you know, for example, those that are based on Ethereum, can be thought as kind of, or at least those. Of course, we <laughs> one one problem with the blockchain, any of these complex blockchain technologies are that they are kind of in development or just like a theoretical constructions mostly so when we are talk of, talking about decentralized autonomous organizations for example they are most of these extreme forms like this for example project terra zero which is a kind of art or and slash research slash technical project which tries to conceptualize a forest that owns itself and can kind of sell part of its well sell its own wood and then kind of buy itself more land and these kind of things but that is of course kind of <laughs> theoretical theoretical project although i think it's basically based mostly on technologies combining blockchain and certain AI technologies, artificial intelligence technologies that are already today in use, but, but still it's theoretical. But anyway, I'm just saying that the, there is kind of element of milieu or environment there in, in these kind of extreme systems. And if you think just like a social media platform, of course, then you are already kind of in this of course, it's mediating your <laughs> your experience with others and uh, and your experience of others and of course how they are speaking and and expressing themselves. So, but I I don't I don't know. Maybe maybe it's I mean it should be I should probably analyze that more and. and Especially when Andrea pointed out those ideas on medium and medial and the differences between them, so that just you know made me think about it. That that uh, that's the my presentation would require more kind of 
analytical approach to concept of medium, of course. But I don't know if that answers your question <laughs> at all. But, but in the first one, uh, but um, but your second one was about that you said about that they are kind of certificate like so things yes okay yeah but uh, well that's a little bit depends because those nfts or non-fungible tokens which have been spoken about now and recent uh, in this year but of course they are older innovations but uh, i think they are because they are just this kind of tokens which represents which represent ownership of digital objects. I think they are kind of special case of blockchain technology. And I don't, I don't, I don't think that the blockchain in general is just about these certificates. Of course, maybe you can argue that these most of the cryptocurrencies are kind of certificates that you, uh, because they are you know, like addresses basically. So they may be <laughs> certificates that you own certain amount of these digital coins or whatever. But uh, I think that the with Ethereum based systems, you have kind of a little bit more complex, uh, at least complex possible, more complex possibilities to create um, kind of, you know, smart contracts, if you, you, you can think them, which can be used as a kind of, especially if you include them at with these uh, kind of devices or you know digital devices or you know internet of, internet of internet of things you can activate the you know uh, for example uh, let's say you want to you want to rent a car <laughs> tesla or something like that so you can just you know use this application to where the just to, you know, activate the system and close it or, or or things like that. But I was just thinking that maybe, maybe in that case too, you could say that that's a certificate for the use of the car. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't, I think, um, But I, I think that the uh, at least well yeah um, well let's say it in that way that I I think that the smart contracts can be used for more complex things. But although I think that the most of the applications now in use in blockchain generally are you know very simple in the end. So you know it's just like as you said, mostly about this that you have, you maybe have access to, or maybe you can just say that you own some kind of digital art or something which you don't really own, but you can say just that you have a right to say that you own it. That's with the NFTs. So, so, I, but I, I don't think that's it's just about this this idea of certification or so. But but that's why I, I was just like thinking and uh, mentioning the blockchain as a kind of protocol because because I think that the most most of its functions is that like it could be kind of this uh, well you know like this kind of organizing structure or protocol which kind of maybe connects things like devices together and in kind of this maybe at least theoretically a de decentralized way so so that there is no so that the blockchain itself doesn't need to kind of do <laughs> do anything else maybe i mean of course somebody else would be pro probably would just wouldn't think like that but 
Yes. Well, I don't know. Maybe I. Yes. Well, maybe that's kind of answer to you then, <laughs> in that sense, hopefully. So, uh, and the third question about the place of event in blockchain. Uh, well, that's an excellent question, of course, too, because I I think that this is the same. This is the kind of general problem with another technical systems, for example, well, let's call them in this case, the algorithm systems or dig digital technology in general, that the, that there is usually kind of this, for example, when systems are designed, there is this kind of uh, idea that now that we are making this as an open source, then everybody can see the code and, you know, can and then kind of people are thinking that it makes it very ethical to use the, this, uh, the ethical the system when they are giving out the code and so on. That of course then that will, as it's obvious, it requires that that you understand the code or something about it, and and at the same time you understand this kind of the milieu, if you will, or environment where it is concretized and where it is in use and the users who are using it and of course also probably even the designers so because of course the designers bias uh, or you know like problematic thinking can be seen or can be have influence on the system itself so what i mean here is that of course that with the blockchain you have the same problem that of course you have this kind of already tools to create. I mean, you have the uh, source, co source code of Ethereum, and you can just, you know, there you go, you can just go and on, create your own decentralized organization. But of course, that <laughs> obviously, obviously requires much more. So, what I'm trying to say probably is something like that the, the uh, if you are talking about invent, invention or inventing in this, this sense, it does require probably that uh, we are kind of thinking again blockchain more like of this possible thing technology which is which is which is probably not best described by Bitcoin, for example, which is as you said uh, or you are pointing out is that. <laughs> it is kind of closed system already, but uh, but of course there is no reason to think that the, with uh, for example smart contracts you can create that kind of system which is using uh, which is kind of making it possible to everyone to kind of participate in it and then. Uh, kind of execute the smart contracts, what, whatever they are for, and then connect with each other. And then on the other hand, even kind of, because there of course have to be kind of rules how the smart cont contracts work in the system. So maybe the smart contracts can, can be used uh, to change these rules itself through voting processes as it is at, as many of the systems are, of course, using already in the sense because. But <laughs> what I'm meaning here is that at, at there are kind of so that the, those that there are different level of rules. First of all, the the code the code itself of the blockchain system, and then there are these smart contracts contracts on top of it. So that the, maybe the smart contracts could be even change the original code itself. I don't know if the, that could be possible. Probably not. But I mean, so I'm. Well, my point is that of course the, you are quite right that the whole idea of invention at, the, for example, in case of Bitcoin, it is. I mean, it is kind of 
closed system already. But at the same time, I think that the, maybe we can think blockchain as a historical singular point of invention <laughs> in the sense that it might be offering as an example of decentralized currency that is working now as a, as a digital de decentralized currency. And then nothing else, kind of historical point, just in this kind of evolution of technicality of techniques. But yeah, I don't know, maybe this answer also gives you just more questions than answers. So, but uh, well, I mean, this can I say something? I yes. uh, this also is, is becomes a question in terms of what does Bitcoin produce in this sense, a sort of um, because it, it produces it, it a sort of hierarchy based on knowledge. So it questions, in a sense, the idea of which might be a Simondonian idea uh, that, uh, you know, uh, once you enter technical knowledge, uh, you get, you know, you are liberated, but actually re you reproduce, you end up reproducing a sort of different um, social hierarchy based on knowledge in this case. Um, um, well, well, which which tells us maybe because I, I was thinking about the the, the quote that, that that Pedro was also uh, referring to uh, the same you were mentioning in your in your paper um, the one in, in the mode uh, when Simon talks about uh, the technical object as uh, um, a, a support a, a symbol. Uh, uh, for trans individual individuation, uh, which in the English translation is medium and symbol. And that's probably why there's this kind of use of the term medium. Uh, but what I was thinking that the somewhere else in, in, in individuation, Simon Don says that la religion c'est du trans individuel. <laughs> religion is the, the trans, du trans individual, the, of the trans individual. Which is quite striking, right? Because I mean, is 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 telling us something more Durkheimian in that sense, right? So religion is you know, where society is born uh, from, uh, and produces social hierarchies and all the things we don't like. And then, what about technology? It does the same. <laughs> uh, so blockchain would be an an example of you know the same kind of injustice, let's say, of social hierarchy, which is produced in a, by what we were perceiving as a possible liberation, technical knowledge, scientific uh, knowledge, whatever. Um, so the thing is, so going back to the trans individual, maybe the problem is we don't have a solution in that sense, but the very tension between um, support technic, technical support technical medium and symbol which is religious symbolic cultural uh you know, referring to the community maybe the, the 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 key i mean the problem is that what we want is a sort of mediation compromise balance which is always to be renegotiated between the sacred and the technical between the fact that we need to believe yeah, in something and someone just because we cannot know everything uh, and the fact that we we, we cannot uh, and also because if we knew everything we will build a society which is still unjust because it is there's a new kind of hierarchy which is produced there depending on knowledge maybe and and so i mean I, in that sense, I think that Simon Don is is uh, is maybe should be used in a way that invites our, us to 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 be cautious mm -hmm. and again and to experiment and see what happens with this medium, uh, this invention within this milieu produces these kind of effects and be, uh, invites us to be ready to see to de detect what's happening, what's going on. Uh, um, to humans, uh, to the trans individual, there, uh, rather than thinking that we might, and I mean, we'll we'll look, we're not, we'll we'll be able to find a solution 
to the trans individual as a problem. The trans individual is the problem, and, and it's a problem in the sense that it, it, it works as long it, as it remains a problem. Uh, and, and, and so in that sense, we cannot say that anything like uh, the, the technical object you're talking about, we are talking about our systems, they are not, never technical only. They are technical and symbolic. Uh, in the same way in which symbolic objects, images, they are never symbolic only. Only they are also technically produced. And and, and so the, the balance is between the level in which symbolic objects they refer to a closed community and to to its mechanism of social reproduction, uh, and and the level. At which technical objects instead refer, I mean, they, they mediate the relationship, as Pedro was saying, between humans and nature, right? So they open humans to something which is shared by all humans. Now we need both. So uh, I'm not saying we need religion, but we need trust, we need uh, meaning, we need belief. And, and as long as we can keep meaning going and changing, uh, as long as we can produce uh, uh, technical objects like this that really keep the meaning going, uh, maybe we we can keep inventing. Now, the question, very question about uh, blockchain would be for me: Is it something, as Pedro was asking, I think more or less, right? Is it something that keeps invention going? Well, it was. It has been an invention. Fine. Uh, now, the fact that it was invented within the capitalist framework is not really the problem as such because i mean as pedro was pointing out you know i mean all this stuff is produced by capitalism it's not produced only by capitalism but we cannot take capitalism away of this history and otherwise all this stuff will disappear um doesn't mean that we cannot find you know different uh aspects of capitalism and of non-capitalism embedded in capitalism that we can uh, use against capital some forms of capitalism at least uh, um, so i mean in, in, sorry to go back to, to the blockchain uh, for instance uh, and to any other medium that we would analyze i think that one good question would be for us to understand whether this medium is working as a medium or becoming a, a media so that is for trans, trans individual individuation. That is, it is a medium at a certain scale, maybe, and it becomes a milieu at some at another scale for the people that are uh, inter individually related at that, at that level. And 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 the, the big question is: Is that something that capable of becoming uh, uh, symbolically? um effective in terms of producing uh, of you know causing a new possible individuations or is it not um, or, and in which media with conditions and, and so on and that's probably the question we should ask ourselves every time we we produce something like this yeah, sorry i'm still going away Well, we have the <coughs> we have the question. So uh, we are arriving to the to three hours now, two hours and forty five minutes. So uh, if uh, Pedro want to add something, um, I I think we have five minutes more or. You who uh, it's very interesting what is the problem is still uh, present here. Let me just but... add, add something. Si, si. Just, just just think together. Um, it's 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 good to think like this. Um, uh, it's imp because it's impossible to think and to comprehend microelectronics without that whole entrepreneur thing that people want to get rich and it's impossible to understand microelectronics without the desire of, of 
national countries to acquire territories and resources because by means of war. So the Second World War and and, uh, and also the entrepreneurial capitalism of the United States are totally linked to microelectronics. But the interesting thing is that you cannot reduce microelectronics to war and capitalism. There is something more. And this is the interesting part about non-human agency and this margin of indeterminacy indeterminacy <laughs> i think you understood what i'm trying to say uh and, and so I, I just wanted to, to to say that because this is what is interesting i for me to try to understand the social agency of silicon it's what it's what it is in there it is in the agency of silicon and it goes beyond capitalism and war and what is it so this is what i think is interesting Yeah, I would like to remind. I mean, this, you know that you you all know that that the, the beginning of the the Communist Manifesto is and it praise the bourgeoisie, right, for the revolution they produced, and because they produced the conditional possibility of further revolutions. Of course, as a you know heterogeneous of, of events, uh, but you know still it's crucial. Yes. You who want to add something? We have more time um, because uh, I was seeing at the hitsy time, but the, our table begins uh, after that, so we have ten minutes. If you want to add something, you yes. Uh, well, maybe yes. Of course, the well. If if I just add something about the blockchain more here, that. Uh, I think it's obvious that the, for example, Bitcoin is a kind of a Im embedded with the right wing values, very much as the David Columbia has pointed out occasionally. But uh, on the other hand, I think that the um, I was just recently li listening to this excellent podcast, uh, which called the uh, Tech Doesn't Save Us, and he was. They're talking about the blockchain again, and I think I agree most of his point. But at the end, he said that the blockchain in general is a kind of right wing; uh, it's full of kind of right wing ide ideology, or that is a right wing thing. But I, I, I think that the what I'm trying to understand is with Simon Don's vocabulary or Simon with Simon Don's concept is precisely the kind of idea that the, there is maybe there's kind of two kind of two politicality here or which is like in concrete applications or technical individuals it's like uh, they are concrete concretely connected to certain political ideas but when you think of it as a kind of this more loose technical schema or essence or something like that and this it can be thought as a kind of uh, that kind of thing that has possibilities to be connected with more worry worry variety of political ideas so because in a sense you can kind of have a this blockchain platform that uh, that you know that can be thought as a for example uh, distributing basic income for certain people, but of course, in a sense, it had to be, <laughs> but that it can, it again had to be using kind of own cryptocurrency, and so it will be kind of difficult to connect it with, you know, like distributing dollars or euros. But, but in a kind of at least in theoretical sense, there could be this, or they can be, of course, not doesn't need to be blockchain can be kind of another a kind of complex algorithm system and that's why I've, I've all I've been more like thinking of blockchain as an example of this kind of technologies which could be achieved maybe so that it just happens to be this one example of this but again I, I don't think that could be but can we you know like really think technologies as of these uh, more hazy 
technical scheme or technical essence structures or do we have to always think them as a kind of concrete technical examples of because that would mean that the then that as it is common the idea that of course all technologies have a kind of ideological and political bent but do they i mean how how is this political bent then connected with this kind of possibility to evolve or this so as Pedro reminded this margin of indeterminacy as that they are they are open to outside information if you will so as Simon Don says I don't know it was just a kind of thought <laughs> So we will see if someone has a question in uh, YouTube, in chat in YouTube. Because um, we have this few minutes more. Or perhaps Diego was asking if there is not an extreme desire for automatism in the blockchain. No? You can read it. Uh, or I was thinking about decentralization, about the the problem of the third part, you know, the uh, avoid the third part in blockchain, but also is uh, this part, this third part uh, in in relation in, in relations uh, is a key to think the the medium. I think uh, the the medium has presented by Andre and this is the I, I think it's now the, the definition of sim of symbol and of symbol in Simon Don. So I, I think this is this is where the third part is the point where we go to I don't know the the idea of decentralization or the this auto this this automatism of the blockchain or in blockchain and in the other way, in other ways, the what Pedro calls the uh, silicium, silicium, silicon cage, no, silicon cage. So we are, we are, we are in the middle. So, so. The, uh, have questions in the chat? Well, maybe I can comment about the blockchain. Yeah, you can you can do it because I think there is no another question in, in chatting too. Yeah, so so isn't there an extreme desire for automatism in blockchain? Mm. Uh, yes, I think uh, most of, most of the ideas is that the, the ideas of how how to applicate blockchain is you know, they are much about doing automatic in in, self, in itself because uh, but maybe we, we get back to the problem or the thing about that the, that's not only possibility with blockchain as it there can be of course <laughs> other kind of blockchains too but so that but maybe the idea for example in my presentation was just like that the, it could be used as a kind of very in the end still kind of very simple system and or as i said protocol to kind of offer this platform but then again, the, the point is that how do you use that platform in addition to that is then another question. Uh, so you are of course right that the, for example, in Bitcoin, it is <laughs> it is very <laughs> automated system in itself. So, but of course it does require some, some degree of human input. But of course, that, yeah. but so does the, so, but I don't know, it, it doesn't re, um, remove the automatism itself, you know, from the system. Uh, 
But yeah, I don't know if I can answer that question very well. So okay. So Diego, uh, there is no question in in, in YouTube. So uh, okay. Um, okay, it's no not a question. We, we finish here. Oh, a, a, a minute. I think <laughs> Mateus. There is one for Professor Bardin. Mateus Pedrini is asking, I copy here, Andrea, the, ooh, a huge question, <laughs> I'm reading now. Um, perhaps some some point um, between yeah. anagmatics and Alagmatic. what you were talking about before. Sure. No, sure. I mean, uh, well, the, the, this, uh, the term is used by Simon Dong very rarely and, and just at the beginning and, and especially in, uh, uh, in some early writings. Um, but actually what he means there is that he talks about the sort of theory of operations or a theory of the transformation of structures into operations and, and so on. And, um, I think that it's mainly a term that he uses for a while in order to explain uh, that what he wants is neither a theory of structures nor a theory of processes, but a way in which uh, you know he shows how structures emerge out of processes. Hmm? So operations is called the processes and structures. Um, uh, and in a sense, it's just the word he's using at the beginning when he's trying to frame uh, his idea of a process of individuation. So basically, at a certain point, I think he doesn't need to use the term uh, anymore. I mean, it's, it's less... At the beginning, he talks about cybernetics uh, uh, as a theory of operations, uh, and then he wants to go beyond cybernetics, uh, and he, he uses the term aragmatics, uh, but I, I, it's just, I think it's just, it's more interesting from a, a philological point of view than by the term itself. I mean, once you, you, you understand what it means by process of individuation and the way in which structures emerge out of processes, I mean, I don't think you need, really need to, to, to use the word allagmatics anymore. I mean, I don't, I don't really like it anymore, <laughs> frankly, as such. It's a bit, I don't know, you, you invent a word where you want to say something different, but it's just, I don't think it is, it has, it tells us much more than uh, his critique of cybernetics uh, and the way in which uh, um, uh, information processes are, are described there uh, in a deterministic way. Um, um, it doesn't tell us more than what it, what it explains with uh, individuation, I would say. I don't know if you agree, Gonzalo. What do you think? I'm I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> it's like uh, I don't know because it's, Gonzalo it, it, loves uh, it, it, loves uh, inventions. Uh, in um, inventions more than me, so maybe. No, it's it's real that um, with a lagmatic world, with with we don't know really uh, what can we do <laughs> specifically. Um, in the first, in the in one of the, the, I think the first, the first table here, I, I heard something that could be a, a way to to understand aragmatic. It's like a, it had to it had to do, I think, with your what what you, what you say is the 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 heart, the core the 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 of of individuation, trans individuation or perhaps a transduction, but well, okay, it's uh, another, uh, we, we need another table, a pragmatic table if, to discuss if we use or not use uh, uh, this, 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 
this world that for me is fantastic. It's, 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 it's a way, it's, it's like an, an enigma. I knew that. I, I, it's, 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 it's an enigma, an enigma. It's an enigma. It's like this. Well, it, it, works, it works, it works, it works. As you say, with um, um, this problem of, um, here I have, uh, about um, about trans individual. Uh, that this is an enigma. It works when it continues being an enigma. If you solve the enigma, it, it it doesn't work. So it's better use use it as an enigma or don't use it at all. Oh, or maybe, it's, it's, or maybe uh, the, the the you know the Lacanian concept of well, Lacanian again, Gisekian of vanishing mediator. Right? It's cool to use it and to make it vanish. <laughs> yeah, and okay. then you have the it's concept. <laughs> And you it, 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 for me, it's okay. Yes, yeah, for me, you know, um, I, I can say it here again. Uh, individuation is like you know, it's like like a roman, like a novel. It's the roman. It's like a recherche de de individuation partie. I think like that. So uh, this this is this this is magic words are are important to pay attention. So, uh, thank you, Mateus Pedrini, for your question. I think you have to choose, Mateus. <laughs> what, what, what can you, what way, which way, pragmatic can you take? Um, my, I thanks. I would thank Yujo, Pedro, Andrea, um, Diego, uh, also um, Carol, um, Thiago Novaes, uh, the you know, organization of this wonderful seminario Simon Domin Indisciplinarum, in wonderful title. Um, I don't know I, uh, which is the next uh, table next week, I think, uh, next uh, Tuesday, Tarsa uh, Feira. I'm not sure what, in Tarsa Quinta Feira, Tuesday and Thursday, there is always uh, two or three tables each day. Uh, so you ha you can see it uh, in uh, the, the Relés, no red red the Latin American of the Studio Simon Donianos. Um, the next one is imagin imaginação e invenção, lengua portuguesa con Carolina Pérez, Catarina Patricio, uh, y Andrés Andrés Bacari Bacari de, de Argentina de Brasil de Portugal de Argentina. Mesa mediada por Diego Piana, en portugués y uh, I, I believe in Spanish too. Uh, and, the, and the next is Aventuras na Tecnoestetic, Adventures in Tecnoestetics at um, three o'clock. Uh, afternoon, Emerson Freire de Brasil, Seto Borges de Chile. Um, y la mediación de Carolina Pérez, también Manuel Bagaleiro de Portugal, uh, Portugal, from Portugal. Next, which day is next, next, 21st, 21st, yeah, 21st September, uh, in, in here in South begins Frühling, Printemps, Spring, and in hemisphere, in North hemispherics are beginning to hot on. Okay, thank you very much. Say ciao. Say ciao. Say goodbye. Ciao. You who, ciao. I don't know who is gonna to close the, the transmission in in YouTube. Uh, Fabiano <laughs> or 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 some or somebody. Um, ciao. Ciao Gonzalo, lungamente ci dice addio.
Lungamente si dice a Dio, sì, ma... 